Hi everyone, um, welcome to Sunday School. And we had a week off of the story of Moses and we talked about back to school Sunday and we read about Pigeon. <laughs> I just love Pigeon, I hope you enjoyed that. And, whoops, I dropped something, hold on. I'm back, it's my clicker. <laughs> so um, yeah, we talked about back to school Sunday and just remembering to go to God when we feel worried or scared. And I hope that your first week was really good. If you started school, some of you might be starting this week. Some of you might be starting next week. There's a whole, there's a whole lot of options in how we're starting school. Anywho, so we are picking back up with Moses this week and where we left off um, in Exodus. So we have just made it through the Red Sea. Remember that the sea was parted, the Israelites went through and the, the Egyptians were chasing after the Israelites, but God parted the sea so the Israelites could get, get through it and they made it safely to shore. And that's where we pick up our story today. And we are in Exodus 15. I have to put my stuff down, hold on. Okay, so we're in Exodus 15 and that's where we will read today. So if you have your Bible, grab it, get ready. We're gonna use it. And remember, if you can't read yet, you might learn this year in school, so that's exciting. So don't worry, and I'm reading, so just try to follow along as best you can if you have your Bible with you. So in Exodus 15, this is a song from Moses and Miriam, and Miriam is Moses' sister. And a lot of biblical scholars, the people who study the Bible very greatly, they spend their whole lives doing that, they think that Miriam is Moses' sister. So that's pretty cool because we know that Aaron is also Moses' brother. And Aaron had a large role in going to Pharaoh, remember, with Moses. Um, so we are at Exodus 15. And this, in my Bible, there's some bold words above Exodus 15. And it says, the song of Moses and Miriam. So they are getting ready to praise the Lord. And we are going to read that today. So let's begin in verse 1. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. It means he is just really great. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. He's talking about the Egyptians. Those guys, we know they did not make it through. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his armies, he has hurled them into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. You know, I know you might be thinking like, ah, should we really be celebrating that? But these are the people who were really, really mean to the Israelites. And sometimes that's just how God works. And especially in the Old Testament, people get punished usually in a not so great way, like death. So um, yeah, Pharaoh's armies, they probably drowned in the sea after God got the Israelites through, sea closed back up and they probably couldn't swim or that sort of thing. So let's keep going. So the deep waters have covered them and they sink to the depths like a stone. Mine just sank right down. You are, your right hand, Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, Lord, shattered the enemy. Yeah, God, thanks for getting rid of our enemies. In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger and it consumed them like, like stubble. By the blast of your nostrils, the water piled up. The surging water stood up like a wall. The deep waters congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue, I will overtake them, I will divide the spoils, I will gorge myself on them, I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath and the sea covered them. So Moses is like, hey, remember Pharaoh and all his people? They were kind of getting like, hmm, we're gonna win. Yeah, we're gonna get these Israelites back and we're gonna put them in slavery again. But Moses is like, but you had a better plan and you saved us, yay God. That's what just happened there. Um, so guess what, I lost my spot. I think I'm here. <laughs> oh my gosh, I haven't done this in a while. This is exciting. Um, they, they sink like lead, the people, not the Israelites, Egyptians, <laughs> in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you, 
majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders. Who else is like our God? No one. You stretch your right hand and the earth wallows your enemies. If you, In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. The nations will hear and tremble. Anguish will grip the people of Philip, the Philistine people. <laughs> Sorry, I can't pronounce that today. Philip, Philistia. That was bad. The Philistines. So God, uh, Moses is like, hey, you're unfailing love. You've redeemed us. This is fantastic. I'm so thankful you saved us. And you're, you're guiding us to the holy place you have for us. And that's the promised land that God promised Abraham way back in. Way back when. So here we go. We keep going. The chiefs of Edom will be terrified. The leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling. The people of Canaan will melt away. Terror and dread will fall on them. By the power of your arm, they will be as still as stone until your people pass by, Lord, until the people you bought pass by. You will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your inheritance, the inheritance, the place, Lord, you have made your dwelling, the sanctuary, Lord, your hands have established. The Lord reigns forever and ever. So Moses, he's just got a whole lot of things to be thankful for, and he is letting the Lord know that he is really grateful that they got out of Egypt, that no Israelites were harmed in the getting out of Egypt, that the Egyptians, they didn't really make it, and, you know, that is something we can kind of be thankful for, that we don't have more story about how the Egyptians just kept coming and kept hurting the Israelites like it was stopped right there at the Red Sea, which is good. And in verse 19, it says, When Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. So then Miriam, the prophet, Miriam's a prophet, how cool. Aaron's sister took a timbrel in her hand. And a timbrel, I would imagine, is like a tambourine. So she took this timbrel and all the women followed her with timbrels and dancing, and Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. So Moses, he had a lot to say, and um, I kind of find it fun that Miriam has like two sentences of her praise, and they're really cool because she it tells us that she danced and she sang with all her gal pals, which is super fun. And... Yeah, I kind of love that hers is right there at the end. It's short and sweet. And she lets us know that she really celebrated, which is really awesome. And that's where we're going to stop today in our reading. I'm going to disappear for a second because I need to pick up my piece of paper. It's more than one. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Anywho, okay, so I kind of love that Moses and Miriam have a huge section. This is almost a whole chapter in the Bible dedicated to praising God, which is really, really awesome. And it feels like a really, really big wow God moment, right? And we have studied Moses for a while now, and we've seen God's faithfulness throughout his life. Well, that's a bummer. Hey guys, I just lost the battery to my clicker. Anyway, fun times here with me because something always happens in a video. Bummer. I, oh, I found it. It's on the floor. No worries. Everything's fine. I just won't be able to click this off. I was so, I was almost professional today with my fun clicker, but guess that's not happening. I lost the back. That's the problem. Anyway, so the battery like stays in by the grace of God, really. And today it fell out, but that's fine. Anyway, so Moses, back to Moses. So we've seen God's faithfulness throughout his whole life. We have seeing how um remember he was a baby put in that basket found by pharaoh's daughter raised in pharaoh's house and he had a pretty good life until he ran away right and he ran off into the woods and he married sephora and he was kind of farming change of pace from palace life and then god called him from the burning bush and god's god assured moses that even when he was scared that God was going to be with him, because Mo remember Moses had so many excuses like, oh no, 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 I'm not the right person for this. I can't, I, I'm slow in speech. No, no, Lord, no. But he went, which is great because we would not have a crazy big chunk of the Bible if we didn't have Moses 
and I'm thankful we have Moses. And God was faithful to Moses through all of that confrontation with Pharaoh. Because that had to be so hard. Remember, ten plagues, ten times he had to go to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh was not too friendly. And Moses came out of all of these things praising God, which I find amazing. Oh, and of course, the Red Sea. Got through the Red Sea. And then they're like, wow, look at this. Look at all we've been through. We were in slavery. We had all the plagues. We were safe. For the plagues remember the plagues only affected the egyptians the israelites were safe during all of the plagues but through all of that they escaped egypt they made it through the red sea even though they were being chased by pharaoh and his army and god was faithful and got them through all of that wow that is so so good and the story of moses you know it does continue but i think i think it's time for us to start a new series next week so I think it's a good place to stop because we've seen how God was faithful to Moses through a lot. And God continues to be faithful to Moses throughout all of Exodus. And you can continue reading that because remember the Bible is for you and it's for all people so we can get, become closer with God. So I would encourage you if you're like, hey, I don't want to be done with Moses yet, Miss Sammy. Come on, read the Bible more. That's awesome if you choose to do that. Okay, so my activity for us today is so you know how I ask you every week like what's your wow God moment and you're probably like Sammy seriously again well we need to make sure that's a part of our practice because God does really big things in our life and we need to celebrate that and thank God for all the wonderful things that he does and how he is working in our life so I thought it'd be fun if you wanted to do like a word cloud or picture cloud of some of the ways God has been faithful to you for the summer because what we have just read about Moses's life and all that stuff he's been through and he came out praising God and all of that and I thought it'd be good if we just consider the summer and maybe you want to even go back to March whatever you choose all of 2020 it's we're entering September there's a lot we can say so I made don't laugh, okay? I'm gonna show you some drawings um, and some words because I did a word and picture cloud because I wanted to combine them because some of the words, it would have been like I was writing a paragraph and I didn't want to do that. So I tried to draw pictures, but we know I'm not the greatest artist. So here we go. I did this. <laughs> okay, you can laugh at it. It's it's sad a little bit, but it's fine. So I wrote praise in the middle so I could keep my mind focused on what I'm thinking about and all of the ways I can praise God. So I praise God for the joy that I've had during this season when it's really, really easy to be grumpy and like kind of miserable and to just feed off of the negativity of the world. So I'm thankful that God gives me joy and things to be joyful over every day. And I'm thankful for the friends that I have that I've been able to connect with on FaceTime or like social distant coffee meetings and all those kind of things. I'm thankful for Jesus because we celebrated Easter during all of this. And that was kind of new and different and kind of strange to celebrate Easter without like really being in church. And I'm, I have a book here. I'm thankful for the Bible, of course, but I'm also thankful for all the other books I've been able to read during this time. I'm thankful for my church family because they mean a lot to me. And, oh, I have my puppet stage down here. It looks kind of pathetic, but that's fine. <laughs> anyway, so thankful I get to do puppets, and that's been really fun. This is um, my really terrible water because I've been able to go to the pool a lot. My apartment has a pool, so that's been nice in the summer to relax. This is a candle. I love candles, I've discovered. They make me feel peaceful. And I like burning candles at night to just be like, ah, oh, calm. And then there's a nice smell, especially after I cook because, you know, like I, my apartment's small. So like if you cook something, like you smell it for a really long time. So I'm thankful for candles because they refresh my air. And they just, I like the light and the calming they bring. Um, Oh, I'm thankful for my, I, I did MC because I went to Messiah College. It's now Messiah University. I don't think much has changed except the name, but I'm thankful for my professors from Messiah because I've been talking to them a lot during all of this. And I'm thankful for Jesus and I'm thankful for the sunshine 
because I love this sound and it makes me feel happy and gray days I'm just I I have like no motivation sometimes on gray days I'm like ugh, it's gray I can't do anything because the sun's not out that's not true I just need to power through but I love sunny days and I'm thankful for the love of God and the love of my friends and family and I'm thankful for art because I've been able to do more creative things during this time. I also, hey, that's one of my favorite emojis, the confetti, like cannon emoji. It just makes me happy. And I like to be able to celebrate with people. And this is really fun. Some of my friends, um, they've had like parties or weddings really on <laughs> online. So I've gotten to attend those and give them my fun, like, yeah, I'm celebrating confetti emoji. So I like the opportunities that we've had to celebrate in new and different ways. I'm thankful for kids because you guys are really fun. And even though I haven't been able to be around a lot of you in a while, I have been so thankful for the videos you send me because it makes me feel connected to you. So that is really great. I'm thankful for my parents. Hey, that's me. I'm on a walk. I go for lots of walks now and that's really fun. And that's my apartment, isn't it? That's not to scale. That does not really look like my apartment. But, so what's, what, what I'm trying to get across here. I live on a, I have a downstairs neighbor. So I live above. So I live on the top floor. So I have a balcony. It's lovely. I sit out there sometimes and read. But I'm pretty thankful for my apartment. And I think it's really calming and nice. And of course there's lots of flowers because I love flowers. And hey, I live in an apartment complex and there are so many dogs. And I try to go on walks when I know the dogs are out for walks so I can say hi to them. And sometimes the owners let me pet the dogs. And I found a golden retriever the other day and he was great. And I had a golden retriever when I was a kid. So it just made my heart really happy. He was so fluffy and just so nice and happy to be alive. That's one of my favorite things about golden retrievers. They're just so happy all the time. Anyway, hey, you should make a fun praise, praise word picture cloud like I did because I didn't realize I had so much to say until I started writing and drawing it all out. And I filled up this whole piece of paper and I think you could too. And I think you could add more details and draw better than me. I am convinced you can do that. So if you do this, hey, send me a picture because I'd love to share and just know how you are praising God during this season, especially as we enter a new season, fall, and getting ready for all the fun things that happen in fall. So I hope that um, you can find ways to praise God. And I think it's really cool that that's kind of how we're ending our series on Moses is through praise because Moses and Miriam, they just praise God a whole lot. It was almost a whole complete chapter in the Bible. And I think it's a good time for us to just give some praises back to God because he deserves them because he works so hard um, for us and in us. So we got to make sure that we're always looking for ways that we can say, hey, thank you, God, or wow, this is amazing. I'm so glad that you did this. And he loves when we praise him. So I hope you all have a fantastic Sunday and I will be with you again through screen next week. See you later, friends.